Let's talk about maps. Although 90% of Dungeons and Dragons is combat and role playing and countless shenanigans, it's also a constant memory test that requires a fair bit of geography. Where are your players right now? Where do they need to go? Where is it that they can sell all of these cobalt teeth that they've been hoarding for some reason? Your players should always be encouraged to explore, and in my opinion, nothing makes that exploration much more exciting than something like a detailed map. You know how when you're reading a fantasy book for the first time and on the first few pages, you can already tell it's gonna be a good book because it includes a highly detailed map that you'll constantly be referring back to? For me, this is exactly what I like to do in my D&D sessions and campaigns. Not only for world maps, but also for town maps, because I want to visually describe to them and show them where they can explore when they inevitably get sidetracked. So in no particular order, here's my favorite D&D map making tools that I personally recommend for your next session. Renowned for its user-friendly interface and vast asset library, Incarnate allows you to create detailed and artistic maps with ease that look like they've actually been lifted straight out of a fantasy book. Is it incarnate? Inca incarnate. Incarnate. Australian doesn't translate very well here. Incarnate is perfect for drawing town maps, regional maps, world maps. I didn't even realize quickly enough that I could just do battle maps with this thing. I haven't done that yet, but I'm going to. What I love about it is majority of it is drag and drop. You can easily place mountains, forests, rivers, structures. You can do squiggly lines to make things look more country-like and just like, just chef's kiss. My face isn't on the screen, but I did the thing. There's a huge library of of high quality assets you can use with textures, icons, objects, even gives you the option if you're artistic enough to upload your own assets. They're always constantly updating this library of assets, giving you an endless palette to illustrate your stories, maps, and worlds, and makes me feel artistic when I know I'm not. Perhaps you're wanting to map out your homebrew world you've been working on so your players have a nice point of reference where the campaign is starting, where they're currently at, or where they're heading towards. Alternatively, maybe you need to design a tantalizing trap island to draw your wizard towards because you know he won't be able to resist it. Look, I'm sure you've probably already heard of Incarnate, but it'd be criminal not to mention it because it's so easy to use and so vastly popular, and it's popular for a reason. It's really, really good. It's important to note that Incarnate has a free and paid pro version of the software. In the free version, you can use around 700 assets and create up to 10 maps, whereas in the paid version, get full access to the library of 18,000 assets and let you create up to 2,000 maps. There's obviously a bunch of other features in the paid version and if you're interested, you can check out the link in the description. If you're after specialized battle map creation for D&D, you won't need to look much further than Dungeon Draft. This fully realized map maker specifically aimed at creating battle maps is available for a one-time purchase. I sound like I'm trying to sell it. I'm not, this is just, it's nice that it's a one-time purchase. And from it, you gain lifetime access to one of the best 2D top-down battle map makers out there. Dungeon Draft is actually one of the first map makers I ever used to integrate with an online Roll20 campaign that I was running. And I cannot stress how quickly I picked it up and created some maps that I still reuse to this day and just kind of reskin very slightly. It's incredibly user-friendly. It's got an appealing art style. There's a nice workflow. It just kind of works really well. I never found myself getting too lost in it. It's also got cool things like built-in lighting and dungeon generators if you want to automate some of the process. It really has everything you could ever need for a battle map and it works really well. Another really cool addition to mention is that it's got third-party art integration with some really talented artists. So if you're after a slightly different art style from the default setting, there are options out there that you can use and implement really simply. It's also really important to mention, if you're using a virtual tabletop, you can of course export and print to paper. That works absolutely fine. If you're using any of the big virtual tabletop platforms, this integrates with them really easily. Like it makes it so straightforward. So if you last minute need to throw a map together and quickly get it into roll 20, just like that. Now let's go from 2D to 3D-ish because it's still top down. Dungeon Alchemist is by far one of the quickest and most innovative battle map builders available. The heart of Dungeon Alchemist, before it triggers anyone, is an artificial intelligence, but not for the art assets, it's just randomly plonking down things in random rooms. Let me talk that through a bit better. So essentially, you preset what kind of room and aesthetic you're going for, then you generate the size of that room, and it'll just plonk in random rooms, random assets, that the people have designed. It's not stealing them from anywhere, it's theirs. It's just like, oh, we're gonna put sword and shield rack in this corner and a bookshelf here. And then you can kind of tweak that as you go. Want a spooky abandoned library? There you go. Maybe a grand treasure filled hall that's got like the remnants of a feast in it. 
or an incredibly questionable pie shop that definitely isn't a witch's coven. Dungeon Alchemist throws these together with ease, making each map not just a space, but a story waiting to unfold. The randomized generation of the rooms is a nice balance of getting 80% of what you need immediately, and then spending a little bit more time just tweaking the rest to make sure it's perfect. Then, once you're happy with the end result, you can either print it out for physical maps or export it to your favorite virtual tabletop, which is incredibly easy and intuitive, which is awesome. A nice bonus feature with the virtual tabletop options is that all of the walls, lights, and doors work with services that allow for those dynamic features. So if you've set up lighting and you're using Roll20's dynamic lighting, it just integrates seamlessly. One of my favorite things about Dungeon Alchemist is that I completely forgot that I kickstarted it, which was a lovely surprise when I got an email saying that, hey, this thing's now ready for you to play around in. And I was like, oh, cool. Speaking of kickstarters, for the first time ever, we have a sponsor. This video was brought to you by the incredible team over at the Son of Oak Game Studio, who have quite literally just launched their Kickstarter campaign for Legend in the Mist, a rustic fantasy tabletop RPG based on the acclaimed City of Mist. In Legend in the Mist, you play as a companion in a band of travelers who set out on a journey to unravel the secrets of the lands beyond their home. You'll likely begin your journey as a denizen of the Dales, a remote mountain community that has lain undisturbed by the outside world for centuries. Lately, however, the wind has changed. It whistles as it blows through the ruins of an ancient tower. Shadows move deep in the forest. A crow calls at dusk. Mysterious chill still grips the nights. There's a sense that what has slept so far is now awakening. Something is wrong outside of the dales. It seeps into the cracks, flickering in the starry sky. You feel it in your bones, an ancient calling, and with it, an imminent doom that'll be the beginning of a long journey. For more information on the Kickstarter, check my link in the description. And any backers made with this link will keep my runes lit in my basement to keep that eldritch horror at bay. Now back to the video. In my opinion, one of the hardest things about playing D&D remotely is the lack of immersion you get as compared to a face-to-face -face session. One where you can really see combat encounters play out and see other players' actions and really just get into it, you know? But Tailspire is the perfect solution for this. Within Tailspire, the beauty and physicality of tabletop gaming, I feel, is truly represented in a digital form, which is a really hard thing to do. Yes, it does have map builder functionality, but if you really want to, Tailspire can be your entire virtual tabletop system. On the map making side of things, there's a really robust and detailed, and in my point of view, a little bit complicated, map building system that takes a little bit of learning, but offers you an endless sandbox of opportunities. Luckily, there's an immense amount of resources out there to actually teach you how to map build in Tailspire, and there's also a library of maps that other creators have made for pre-written TTRPGs, if you want to go down that route. I'm currently playing in a Curse of Strahd West Marches style campaign that's entirely played in Tailspire with these pre-created maps, and I absolutely adore it. If you want to fully commit to everything Tailspire has to offer, it really lets you do it all. You can collaboratively build your worlds without compromising the handcrafted aesthetic of using traditional minis, which I do absolutely love, but they do get expensive and time consuming. As a player, you can take on the mantle of multiple heroes and creatures, manage your stats, and express yourself using a growing emote system, which will get abused by your players. You can also perform dice rolls directly on the virtual board and interact with the environment at least as far as your DM lets you interact with it. On the DM side of things, you can build expansive maps, set up cinematic shots, control immersive soundscapes, and really bring your worlds to life. It's a genuinely amazing concept, but my favorite part is watching the world kind of animate and build as you change the scale of the viewable height. Like, isn't that just so cool? It is still in early access, but they're constantly coming out with new updates and new features, and I genuinely couldn't recommend it more. As a really quick and bonus add-on, I've only recently picked up Canvas of Kings, but I just adore it. Something about the combination of the minimalistic hand-drawn art style, its ease of use, animations, kind of auto-generation of things along a path, I'm, I just, it melts my brain in a good way. Let me do a better job at describing its features. One of the best features it has is letting you define your map with paths and plots that you can adjust at any time. You can then, with these paths, automatically place objects along that path. So in that way, you could directly create a wall of towers that follow along a road that you've built or something along those lines. I also love having the option to use the inbuilt lighting and weather system because animation of weather and the atmosphere of it just looks awesome. 
Did I mention I love the hand-drawn art? Because I love the hand-drawn art. It's just nice and I like nice things. It is still early days with it and there's still a lot of features intended to be added in. So it might not have all the bells and whistles of some of the other things I've listed in this video, but I definitely think it's worth picking up or at least keeping your eye on it. So there you have it. Hopefully, at the least, you're gonna go pick up some paper and start playing around with drawing some maps or trying out some of the things in this video. If you think I've missed out on anything or any omissions on my behalf that you wanna recommend me checking out, let me know in the comments. Also, I know this video is a lot different to me making skit joke videos and it's a bit more information based. I had a lot of fun creating it. Don't know how you'll take it in. So if you wanna see more things like this, please let me know. Always happen to suggestions. I do have a lot of actual knowledge in this head that isn't just dumb character idea that's funny, but I understand that that might be what you want. Anyway, enjoy the rest of your day and until we talk again, watch out for mimics.